It's Mama Bear time, and you're watching the Mama Bear Show. Today, I'm going to be showing you guys how to make these fun little Halloween decorations. This little ghost here, and we have a bigger size ghost that's actually hanging up outside right now that we'll show you later. And these fun little witches hats. And then later, for Cubs Corner today, we will have our little alley cub will be helping me make popcorn balls. So that'll be fun. They're really sweet. So first off, for the ghosts, you're going to need some crafting balls. White ones work the best. You're going to need glue. I think hot glue gun works the best, but that's just my own opinion. Some string, which I use fishing line because it's strong and it's clear, so it gives a good illusion. You're also going to need some white material. You can use tissue paper or you can use cloth. Tissue paper won't last as long, especially if you're going to put it outside. It will probably get tore up, especially if you have October winds like we do here. You're also going to need some scissors, a black marker, permanent markers work the best, some kind of wire. I use simple little white pipe cleaners and they work just perfect for this. And that's all you're going to need. Let me actually plug my hot glue gun in. Forgot to do that before, but that's okay. First off, with your balls, there are a d ton of different size balls that you can get, crafting balls. I prefer the styrofoam. For this, it's going to work a lot better. You can also get the hollow plastic ones. Uh, styrofoam is a, a lot of times cheaper, maybe not much difference, but it's a lot of times cheaper for, than the plastic. And for this, rather than worrying about making your hole too big whenever we're going to put the wires in or whatever, you don't have to worry about that because the styrofoam is a lot more forgiving in that area. However, if you'd prefer to use the plastic balls, you can make that work too. There are a ton of different sizes you can use. I have two different sizes here. They have much bigger ones. They even have a couple smaller ones. I think it'd be a little bit dip more difficult to make them with the smaller ones, but whatever, whatever floats your boat is fine. Uh, depending on the size of ball, you're going to need whatever size of material. And this is for the smaller ball. And you just need a, a square-ish. And to cut that, you don't have to worry about straight edges or anything. Don't worry about any of that. What I did was I just folded the corner of my material over and then I cut along the edges and if you could see this up close, it's not it's not even at all. And that's perfectly fine. If you want to, you can even cut slits in it when you're done. Have it wavy and kind of creepy. However you want to do it. Uh, but, first off, after you have all your materials laid out, what I would start with is your fishing line. Now... This is really difficult to see. You can kind of see how the light hits it. <laughs> you can cut off however, however much you want, however little you want. You can always cut more off later. And it really depends on where you're going to be having it. And I lost mine on the floor. Where you're going to be hanging it up and everything. Now... I want to get up here and show you. I'm going to actually knot this. Now, if you're worried about this coming through your material for whatever reason, if you have bigger holes in your material than the material that I chose, then you can always lace a bead through there before you tie it. And that'll keep it from going through the hole because obviously, hopefully, you didn't pick something that a bead will go through. I would choose a, a white bead. If I were you. Now, what I did with these other ones was 
instead of using a bead, I just took an extra white pipe cleaner, cut off a tiny, tiny piece, and then I made a little halo on it, out of it. Just a little tiny halo, you can't even tell that it's a halo when it's done, it's just an oblong little thing. And then you lace your string through it, and you tie another knot, and then when you're done with that, here, let me get a, I'm going to make the halo before I cut it this time. It's usually an easier way to do it. a tight little halo, cut it off, tie it on there, you don't have to double knot it, I would, especially if you're using anything that you're afraid might come undone. Fishing line is one of those things that it's actually hard to get it really tight when you're tying a knot. But as you can see, yeah, that's not going anywhere. All right, I'm going to put this aside for now. You're going to want to make sure that you have a decent sized workspace whenever you're doing this. Also, if you're using a hot glue gun, be very careful. Don't burn yourself. If you're a younger person trying this, Make sure it's okay with your parents before you use the hot glue gun. They'll be the best the best judges of whether or not you should have that. Also, always protect your area that you're working on. I'm using just a plain white index card for my hot glue gun. Alright. Next thing. On your on your balls, you want to make sure that you're sorry. My little Damien Knight here is getting in my way a little bit. Okay. On your balls, you're just going to want to draw two eyes and a mouth. You can do it however you want. I like the oblong O because it looks like a, you know, creepy. Woo! They look, kind of, they look really funny and ridiculous like this, but it looks better whenever you put the, the material over it, I promise. So once you have that done with your marker and color them in and everything, then what you want to do is on the bottom, I'm going to use the small one because that's what material I have cut out for right now. On the bottom, you're just going to stick the scissors. Be very careful with the scissors. You're just going to stick them in and just twist so that you get a nice good little hole going on. See that little hole? Get yourself a little, a little hole. Now, if you're doing a big one, I would recommend you take two, if you're using pipe cleaners, I would recommend that you take two white ones and, uh, well, you'll take four, but you'll take two at a time. Even if you're doing the small one, you're going to take two white ones and just twist like this. So that you get this little twist going on. It's going to double up on the strength. It's going to make it stronger and sturdier. I'm going to do that all the way down until if you have... If you are just doing a smaller one, this will this will suffice. This is two twisted together, and then I folded it in half. If you're doing the bigger one, you're going to want two sets of two sw twisted together, and you're going to twist this top part together, but just the very top, and then you're going to use it that way. If you're using the one... After you fold it in half, you're going to twist the folded part just a little bit. See that? Okay. 
And then you're going to want to make sure that it's going to stick in there, your little hole that you made pretty well. Pull it out. Put some glue down into that hole. The dog's a barking. She's going crazy. All right. Now, hot glue dries pretty fast. If you're not using hot glue, I would recommend you wait for a while and let it let it dry. Now, you're going to want to, however you want to shape it is fine, but these ends are sharp. Anybody who's worked with pipe cleaners know the ends are sharp. So, no matter what you do, you're going to want them bent a little bit so that they don't go through your, your white material at all or don't get stuck or snag it or any of that stuff. Now, you can either just bend it like that, you can bend it over all the way, whatever you want to do, it's up to you. Now, you're going to go back to this little piece that you made, the little halo. You're going to be very careful if you're using hot glue. You do not want to burn yourself. But you're going to put some on the very top. Nice little amount there. And then you're going to stick that halo right down on top of that. And I have some extra fishing wire hanging off here. I'm just going to cut that off. I'm going to snip that off real quick because it's going to bug me if I don't. It won't matter because the material is going to be covering it. Now, I, want, I personally want to make sure that this is all dried and good to go before I put the material on because... I don't like to put glue on the material. You can. You can glue it in place. But I find that if you don't glue it in place, it's a lot easier to move around if you so choose to later, if you want to redo it, if you want to fix it, if you want to do something. So uh, what I do to find the center is I figure out which is the best way to, well, that's definitely not it. All right. I just triangle it from its square and then I kind of fold it and see see kind of where the middle is going to be see mine is not even at all so I'm going to go for where the point is to try to find a, a decent spot to do this now you open it back up this is where fishing line makes it easier than the other. The other you would need a needle to thread it through, uh, if you use thread or yarn or anything. Fishing line with this material, even though it's it's a material that is not, it, the holes in it are not real big. It just goes right on through, it threads it through. And then once it's through like that, you just fix it up. Well, it's easier if you hold on to the ball and do it. And you can all, this is where you'll want to play with the, this is where you'll want to play with the uh, pipe cleaners and, and figure out exactly where you want them and how you want them and all that. And. There you go. There's your little ghosty. And you can see his face just slightly, just ever so slightly through the material. And when he's blowing in the wind, he's going crazy. And like I said before, if you want to, you can even you can even cut slits into the bottom of this. You can cut little slits in or like a fiery pattern in and then it'll wave more like it's tattered and torn. But that is our ghost. And we will show you our ghost outside.
Now for the bigger one, just a side note, after you put the long pieces together, you're going to do the exact same thing that you did with the, with the smaller version. And you're just going to, after you put a hole in the bottom of your little guy, you're just going to stick this part that you twisted together up in that, and you're going to do that. Now, if you do anything much bigger than this size, if you want the material to be bigger as well, you're going to have to use something a little stronger than pipe cleaners, or you're going to have to use like four pipe cleaners or something. It's going to get ridiculous. It might be just easier to just use wire. And that's your ghosts. All right, and now for our little witch's hats. Those are pretty fun, huh? What you're going to need for these, you're going to need some fishing line or string, whichever you prefer. You're going to need something to make a nice circle. I use a compass. You can use a cup, a bowl, whatever. It depends on what size you want. You're going to need some kind of glue. Hot glue gun works the best, I'm telling you. It'll work better than regular glue, especially with the pipe cleaners that we're going to be using. You can use whatever colors you want. It depends on what ever tickles your fancy. Yes, I just said tickles your fancy. I used two black two blacks and an orange for for this one. You can use whatever you want. You're going to need some kind of construction paper or felt. It can be whatever color you want with a witch's hat. Black works really well. Sorry, Ely Cub was having a little moment there. You're also going to need, I would use plain white index cards. Simply because they are more sturdy than paper and they're cheap. You can use poster board, you can use whatever you want to use for it. But it needs to be flexible enough that you can... You can kind of do this. It's not really a fold. You can roll it without messing it up. But it want, but you want it to be sturdy enough that it's going to hold up whenever you're putting on your, your pipe cleaners. I would say get some, grab some tape. You don't have to use tape. You can use more glue if you would like. And you're going to need scissors and a black marker or a colored marker that's going to match one of the colors on your hat. Now, first off, let's start with, we're going to take white index card. Now, if you're using a compass like I'm going to be using, it has this sharp thing. You don't want to damage your table, so make sure that you put something under it. I'm just going to use a couple more index cards. You can make it whatever size you want. Me, I sit there and will put my point at the very end and then I will make it as big as I can without going off. Now, if you're using something bigger than an index card or if you're using a small circle, you can make an entire round circle and then fold it in half and cut it in half after you cut the circle out. That's perfectly fine. It works exactly the same, but you want a straight edge and a half circle. Exactly like this. Now, I've figured out that the easiest way to do this is to go ahead and cut your fishing line first. Fishing line, great thing, great tool to have. I just cut off however much I want, however much looks like it would be good. Now again, I'm going to knot this. For my knots, you can do it however you want. You can put a bead in it. I would recommend that if you're going to put a bead in it, you put a fairly small one in because you want it to go up to the top of your hat. You don't want it hanging down or anything. Now me... I loop it and then I tie a knot in it. So I kind of double it over and then tie a knot in it. And 
then I have a little loop there and that's gonna hang down into the hat but you're not gonna see it so and I always attempt to double knot it, it doesn't always work that way however this time I think it might all right and get it as tight as you can I know fishing line is really slippery it's kind of a pain but get it as tight as you can there we go so then you're going to lay that down but don't lose it fishing line is not the easiest to find whenever you lose it but that's part of the magic of fishing line that makes it so cool when you use it on things like this you're going to take your half circle and you are going to roll it up you can do it whatever way you want now before you roll it up tight you're going to stick this fishing line down in there so that it's already in there you don't have to try to thread it through because if you do it right you don't want much of a hole at all you're gonna do that now I like mine about there you can you can make them wider you can make them you know skinnier however you want to do it and then I just tape this part because it's gonna be covered and really it's not worth it to mess with the glue now I tape that there so now I have this this little guy all right I I'm using three pipe cleaners. I'm using two blacks and an orange. You can do it however you want, whatever pattern you want, whatever. Um, two blacks and a purple would be really pretty. Um, keep in mind, if you only use two, you will likely need to add some to the bottom. You'll have to use, you'll have to glue that on and then you'll have to do some more work because it's probably not going to cover the whole thing if you do it about this size. But what you're going to do is just this top one, you're going to want to make sure that you really get it around here really, really well. So it's kind of circling around the, the string and it's at the very top. And then all you're going to do is the hardest part is starting them. And then once you get them started, you're just going to wrap them around. Ah. You're just going to wrap them around like so until you end up with something that looks like this. Now, once you get them wrapped around, it's going to be, you're going to be able to pull this the you're gonna be able to pull the white part down now when you pull the white part down because these will be wrapped around it I'll just do a quick rough estimate it's not gonna be that pretty but that's okay now anybody who's worked with pipe cleaners much knows that they're kind of a pain unless you're able to make them uh, like just fold them but it is possible to make them go round in circles and just take some pushing and some shoving and eventually you'll get it I found the easiest way to do it is to squeeze on them a little bit as long as you don't lose your shape completely just kind of squeeze as you're going and it'll shape them and then Basically, whenever they're done, you'll be able to kind of pull, the whole thing will come off of this. But don't pull them off of the, your fishing line. You'll want them to stay on your fishing line. You'll just pull them off. When you're all the way down to the bottom, you'll pull them off. You'll use your glue gun, and you will glue all the way down the side. And then you'll glue all the way around, not the very base, because whenever you're pulling it back down, it's going to pull that with it. Uh, that glue with it but you're gonna want just a tiny bit of space and you're gonna glue around that and then you're going to pull this back down on top 
and you're going to, when you pull it back down on top, you have very little time, but you are able to mold it the way that you want it, um, to pull it down so that it looks the way that you want it to look really quick. You can see that. Once you have that done, here's where I use black construction paper. You can use any black, any construction paper you want, it doesn't matter. I used my compass again. I made, I figured out how big I wanted the brim of my hat. I didn't want it too small. I didn't want it too big. But I made another circle. I cut it out and then in the very center where I had the point of my com uh, of my compass, it has that little dot, and I just stuck this through the scissors through, and I kind of made a little tiny, I made a little hole, and then I cut little tiny slits so that I can punch my thumb through and it'll be, I'll be able to make this little, this, I'll make, be able to push it in, and then you'll see this little hole here, there's a hole here, you can't really see it, you can see it that way. Once you're done with this, you're going to glue around the very base, make sure that you get those pipe cleaners really well. And then you're going to center it quickly, stick it on there. It doesn't have to be perfectly centered, but center is better. Ow. Careful again with the hot glue gun. You don't want to do what I just did and glue your finger and it's a little warm. But leave it to me. I'm kind of an accident waiting to happen. If you have these little stringies, just pull them off. That's fine. Now. Once that's on there, nice and tight, I just stick my finger through that little tiny hole on the bottom and I push up until I meet the rest of the hat so that I have, nobody's gonna be looking at the bottom. It's just there so that it's there. And I ruffle up the brim a little bit to give it that feel of not flat, not paper. Just kind of make give it a little bit of a texture. And that, my friend, is a fun little hat. You can do whatever you want with it. You can even put it on like a blow pop or a Tootsie Roll Pop or something. And it can be a little just a fun excuse me, fun little hat. Now if you end up with white spots, just perfectly normal, perfectly fine. If you do end up with white spots, I had some white spots on this one. Oh, there's a white spot right there at the brim. Just take a black marker or whatever color you chose and just kind of color it in. It'll be less noticeable. Nobody will think twice about it. And that is that. Now, my friends, it is time for Alley Cub to come help me in Cub's Corner. Enjoy. So I'm gonna first put my hair up before we do this, but we are gonna be making some popcorn balls. Um, I'm gonna be making it with, with my five-year-old. However, this part is for adults only. I'm taking off my jewelry just because I don't like to cook with jewelry on. Um, first thing to note is you're going to need 20 cups of popped popcorn with the, the unpopped kernels removed and to keep that warm so that you can add the mixture to it, you're going to keep it in the oven at 300 degrees and then you're going to need a pan and you're going to want your stove at about a medium high heat and you're going to take 
one and a half cups of sugar, one and a half cups of the light oh. corn syrup, two tablespoons of butter, <laughs> one teaspoon of vanilla, seven ounces of a jar of marshmallow cream, which is this yummy stuff right here, and one and a half cups of M&Ms, which we'll worry about those later. Uh, first you're going to take your sugar and your light colored corn syrup and you're going to you're going to just be mixing these on the medium high heat. You want to bring them to a try to get some of that out of there. You're going to want to bring these to a boil as they're mixed together. Mix that up really, really well. Whoops. Maybe I should pay attention to what I'm doing. Doesn't exactly smell the best, but it'll be better later. It doesn't smell bad. It's pretty sweet. I think that's mixed pretty well. And you get this lovely, not quite opaque color. And I'm just going to set that in there. You're going to want to make sure that you stir this constantly. You don't want it to burn or get gross on the bottom or on the sides or anything. So you're going to want to stir it pretty constantly. I mean, you can take a break every once in a while, but... For the most part, you're going to be stirring constantly until it is at a really good boil. Okay, and once it starts doing that, you want to take it off because you do not want to turn it into candy. Uh, it boils a lot faster than water does, so don't worry about the a watch pot doesn't boil because it'll start boiling. You're going to add in your, oh, your marshmallow fluff that is extremely sticky. Get as much of that in there as you can. And you can just take this right out of the jar into it. You don't have to put it into a bowl to make a mess or whatever. Um, you do it however you feel comfortable. You put your butter in and your vanilla. I love these little ramekins. They're a perfect size for things like this. And then you're going to try to, without making a huge mess, which I may not be very successful <laughs> in doing it, but without making a huge mess, you're going to attempt to stir this all in really well together. You don't want these clumps. You're going to have to do your best to get it all. It's hot enough that it should melt it pretty well. And this would be easiest with a whisk, but if you don't have a whisk, these little clumps like that, right there, I mean that's a tiny one now, it was pretty big, but just kind of smash them against the side. That's the easiest way to get those clumps down a little bit. And I think that looks pretty well mixed. So you want it to have a nice thick consistency, not a bunch of chunks or big glops of anything. And I think we're ready for the next part. Now you want to do this while this is still hot and you want the popcorn still warm. So we just took this out of the oven and we separated it into two bowls so that we have enough space to mix. You're going to need two spoons if you're going to use two bowls and you want your kid to help you out. Make sure you use a pot holder underneath the pan if you set it down because it's going to be really hot. You don't want to burn or scorch your, your table or your tablecloth or anything. Um, my little A-cub here. 
my little five-year-old. I'm gonna go ahead and drizzle some on here and mix it about mm -hmm. half and half, do the best I can, because I'm doing it by sight. Yeah. <laughs> it looks kind of yucky, doesn't it? Yeah. But it's going to taste really yummy. Mm -mm -mm. You love popcorn, huh? Yeah. I love popcorn. This is going to be like sweet popcorn. Mm -mm -mm. It's going to be delicious. Mm -hmm. All right. Don't touch. It's going to be hot, so do not touch it, all right? Okay, be sure that if you're doing this with your kids, you explain to them they cannot touch it because it's very, very hot and it will burn them. Go ahead and use your spoon, kiddo. And you're just going to, don't touch it, just go in underneath like this. You can hold the bowl, honey. Here, let's watch. Like this. Okay. okay. Go in the sides and everything. And mix it up the best that you can. And I'll help you finish it off whenever. Oh, it's still hot because I'm not messed up. Must. You're going to have to be careful, okay? And again, this part, you don't have to have your child help you with because this is a little bit more risky business considering that it's hot and they're dealing with it and it's easy to make a mess and, and all that. It, it can be stay on it. It's okay. And it can be a little bit difficult because this is sticky very sticky. Uh, yeah, I don't have much water. It's okay. It's all right. Here, let me get some of your popcorn because I think I put a little bit more fluff into mine than I did yours. Careful. You don't want to spill any, especially because we have little eye cub down here and she's Ow. underfoot. Don't don't spill any, please. Good, you guys pay up fast. And you want to be careful whenever you're mixing it. You want to just do it lightly and gently, or else you're going to smash it all down, and it's just going to be a big glob of goo. Daddy, you messed that piece of my hair. Hey, it's fine. Daddy doesn't do hair. <laughs> Calm down. It's all good, right? What? Here, let me let me help you. You can hear it crunching even when I'm sitting here doing it, but it'll be okay. Now, it's okay with it quite. All right, now, once these are cooled off, and just by folding this stuff in, they, it cools off pretty quickly. Um, go ahead and you're gonna add your candy, your M&Ms. And this part, I would say, parents, you're probably gonna wanna do this part because this stuff is getting really thick and over there. Yeah, me but parents are probably going to want to fold these the M&Ms mm -hmm. in yourself because this is getting really sticky and hard. And then we will have And it'll just be easier if you do it. So that Again, more of a folding type of action here. The best that you can, you're going to crunch some of it, but that's just the way it's going to have to be because this gets hard and sticky and you just want to do the best that you can without smashing too much of it. Fold in those M&Ms. I'm going to go ahead. Scoop it out of your hands. I know <laughs> The baby is playing in the dog's water, so I think I'm going to have her dad go ahead and go get the baby. Okay, now I have a pan of water here, and I also have a towel. What we're going to do is we're going, I have these two little cupcake holders, uh, really cheap at the store. They're like, got these, got a bunch of them for like a dollar, and they're festive, they're orange and black. For fall, we're going to dump our hands, dunk our hands in the water to get them wet, and then we're going to just—you can make them whatever size you want. If you want bigger, 
balls, then you can make them bigger. <laughs> if you want smaller ones, you can make them smaller. And just make them nice and tight so that they're not going to fall apart. And then just drop them down in your little thing. M &M. Yeah, an M&M &M fell in there, huh? Yeah, no. All right, do you want to help? Go ahead and dip your hands in the water. Okay, now pick some of the popcorn up. Wow, it's really and sticky. It's really sticky, huh? Yeah. Make it a little bit bigger than that. Add some to it. Like this? Just like that. Good job. Add a little bit more. I want a super big one. Here we go. And this is a fun thing that you can do when your kids have fun getting sticky and dirty and, and all kinds of yucky hands. And it's festive, great for Halloween, great for kids to eat and have fun with. And what you'll do at the end is you'll wrap them up in cellophane. I can make this. Let me try again. And that's it. Mama's hands are all sticky and look at all that chocolate. That's You'll have fun licking your fingers when we're all done, won't you? Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Make some more. Hey, look. Look at that. Good job. That's perfect. You have a couple of them over there, too. I know. You want some so bad, too, huh? You have to wait till you get a little bit older. And to recap what we did today on Mama Bear on the Mama Bear Show, we had our wonderful ghosts, Ooh. our fun little hats, ah, we had some really sweet popcorn balls, yum, and that was it for today. And this is Damien Knight and Mama Bear. Have a great night.